Alright, this is Uncle Jam and we are back at it with another tutorial video. In this episode, we are going to be going over the JSON format and how it is used in the game of Minecraft. This is going to be the first episode of my custom model series and we will be using custom models as examples in this video to show you how to use JSON. A couple things you're going to need for this tutorial and in order to work with JSON formatting is you're going to need a software which will allow you to view JSON formats very nice and straightforward and allow you to edit them while maintaining the correct format. Now on Mac, I would recommend the program entitled Brackets. It's a free software and you can find a link to that in the description below. And for Windows, I would recommend Notepad++, I think has a good JSON viewing plugin that you can add. Or maybe there are some better softwares. If you know of a good Windows software, make sure you pop that in the comments for the other guys to help them out. So let's get into JSON. All right, so starting off here, I'm going to open up a document which is written in JSON that is from the game of Minecraft. So I have a generic resource pack folder here. If you would like to learn how to create this, check out episode one in my resource pack series. I'm going to head into assets into Minecraft, and I'm going to head into the models folder. This is where the models are stored, and we have the block models and the item models. I'm going to head into block, and I'm going to pick a model here to examine. So I think I'll pick the andesite smooth, and we will pop it open. Now you'll notice it opened up with my bracket software. Let me close out of that. Now there's a couple things that right off the bat you will notice. The first thing is you'll notice we have some brackets. We have curly brackets here and here, and we also have a couple more curly brackets. We have some quotation marks with text inside. We have colons and commas. Now there are actually rules as to when and where to put all of these various characters in your JSON format. And these rules have to be followed, otherwise it won't know how to read what you're trying to say. Now, JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It should be fairly easy to read. However, if you don't know what you're reading or what you're looking for, it can get confusing. Now, in JavaScript Object Notation, we have objects. Now, an object is something like this. This is an example of an object. What an object is, it's, is it's a name and a value separated by a colon. So this here is an object. The name is parent, the value is block slash cube all. Now objects are contained within curly brackets. They must be within curly brackets. They can also be in a list which is separated by a comma. So as you can see here, this file is actually a list of two objects. We have the first object here, and then we have another object which follows this comma, which is actually textures. There's the name and the value for textures is actually this all together. All of this contained within the brackets. So it is two objects. We have this one and then the one following. So that's what an object is. Keep that in mind. Now you'll notice with this second object, the value is actually a, another object in itself. So I hope that is not too confusing for you. As you can see here, we have parent, that's the name, and block slash cube all, that's the value. And, and textures, we have textures, that's the name. The value is a bracket and another bracket. So whatever's within the, these two brackets is a our value. And within the brackets is actually another name value pair, which is another object. Which brings me to a set of rules which we must follow when we're dealing with objects. So we've established an object is a name and a value separated by a colon. All together creates an object. Now we have some rules about what can be a name and what can be a value in these objects. Now the name can be a string and that's it. It has to be a string. Now, what I mean by a string is a piece of text surrounded by quotes. Don't be intimidated by the fancy names. A string is 
in this case refers to a piece of text surrounded by double quotes. So every time in your objects, your name must be a string, always. So that's pretty easy to remember, only one rule there. Now our value, we have a couple more options. The value, we can have a string. In this case here, as you can see, we have the double quotes and we have a piece of text inside. So this is an example of another string. So the pair is a string and a string. That's the pair. Now, the value can also have a couple other options. It could be a number. Now, to type numbers in, we just type it in. We don't have to put it in quotes or anything. So this would be an example. Something like that. That would be a string and a number pair. This is still an object. Just the value is now a number. So let me put it back to the way it was. There we go. So it can be a string. It can be a number. It can also be an object. So another object. Now a perfect example is this one here, textures. You can see the name. Once again, that's a string. And the object is actually another, or sorry, the value is actually another object in itself. So this would be a string and an object. So now we have three things that the value can be. It can be a string, a number, or it can be a whole nother object. Another thing the value can be is something called an array. Now an array actually has a few rules in itself. What I mean by an array is a list. Just a list of values. Now the values have to be contained within squared brackets and they have to be separated by commas. Now you may ask, what can we type in for the values inside of an array? And it's actually the same valid values that you see on your screen right now. So if I were to do numbers, for example, I could type two comma, four comma, six, five, and then six, there we go. And then we would end it with a square bracket. There we go. Now we have an example of an array. So this here is an array. It is separated by commas. Notice the last comma, there's no comma. I mean, the last value, there's no comma. That's because at the end of a list, we don't put a comma. That's another important thing to remember when dealing with JSON. At the end of a list, you don't put a comma. So here's the value, here's our array contained within square brackets. It contains one of the valid value types that we have shown on the screen and it is separated by commas. Now, once again, this can be anything in this array. It can be any one of those valid values. So we could have an array of strings. We could also have an array of objects or we could have an array of arrays. Now that might start getting confusing, but you could potentially do so. So I've just reverted it back here to where we started. And one of the last things that the value can be is a Boolean. Now, if you're not familiar with coding language, you may not know what a Boolean is. A Boolean is basically true or false, either one. So we, in order to type that, we remove that and we just type whichever option we want. So we're gonna type true. There we go, that's a Boolean value. That is completely valid. So th these are all of the options that the value can be within an object, which once again is a name and a value. Together make an object. That is basically some of the basis of JSON. Once you start understanding all of these various little terms and all of the values that you can plug in for the second half of your object, you'll start to become a master and you'll be able to start looking at all of these documents and realizing what is going on. So let's open up a few more block models and try to examine what exactly is going on. So before we move on, let's do a quick overview of everything we've covered so far. So JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation and deals with objects. Now objects must be contained by curly brackets. It's another thing to remember. The data, the objects are in name value 
pairs. So this is an object, and a list of objects is separated by comma. And if we had another object, we would put another comma and then another object down. So the objects are separated by commas. The name must be a string. A string is a piece of text contained within two quotes. The value, we have many options of what the value could be. The value can be a string, it can be a number, it can be an object, it can be an array, and it can also be a boolean or a true or false. Now, an array also has a couple of rules. The arrays must be contained within squared brackets. They must be separated by commas. And the values of the arrays are the same values that are valid within this part of the object. So the value for an array could also be a string, a number, an object, an array, or a boolean. All right, so I've gone ahead and opened up the tnt.json here. I thought we'd break it down. So once again, we see the curly brackets starting us off. So we would expect to see an object. And we do indeed see an object. There it is. It's a string and a string object. We see a comma. So we would expect to see a second object. And once again, we do. We see a second object here, which has a string and then a, another curly bracket. So we would expect to see an object or some more objects, which we do. We see another object here, which is string string, followed by a comma. We see another object, which is another string and string, and a final object, which is another string and string. Notice there's no comma. Keep that in mind. No comma at the end of your lists. So this contains two objects, the top object and the second object, which is contains three more objects. Now you'll notice as you start looking at these JSON files, they are just a giant web of objects. So it's just a matter of making some sense of all of these objects. So I hope you can see that there are two objects here. And within this second object, we just have a list of some more objects. Let's move on to a more advanced file. All right, so here is the file for the torch in the game. Now it does look confusing, however, just as long as we work through it logically and try to maintain some clarity, we should be able to see what is going on. Once again, just ignore what all of these are actually saying. I'll be covering those in future tutorials. So to start off, we see a curly bracket. Once again, we would expect to see an object following. And we do, we see an object and this one is a string and a boolean. We have false. And then we have a comma. Now we expect to see another object which we do, we see a second object, which is a string, and then we have an object following as the value for that object. Then we have another comma, and we have a, another object, a third and final object. Now this is a rather large object, but it is still an object, and we have a string followed by an array. And in this array, we have some more complex stuff. So what this is actually an array of, and the reason we know it's an array, once again, is because of these squared brackets, is it's an array of objects. So we see we have the first one up to the comma here. That's our first value in the array. We have up to the comma here, there's our second value within the array, and our third and final value within the array is here. So let's break down one of these because they're pretty much the exact same across the board here. So within our first value of the array, we see a curly bracket. So once again, we would expect to see a object or a list of objects. And that is in fact what we see. We see the first object here, which is from, which includes another array as the value. And we see another object, which is to, and we see a, another array, another object, which is shade. And we see a boolean as false. And then we see another object, which is faces. And the value for this is actually some more objects, which is down and up. Down is a string and more objects. And up is a string and more objects as the values. So I hope you can see now this is turning into a bit of a web of objects. So within faces we have two objects down and up 
and the values for these objects are right here, which is another list of more objects, which is we have the UV and we have the values in an array. And then we have textures and torch, which is a string string value. So I hope this is all somewhat clear to you guys. As you can see, it can get a little bit confusing, but as long as you know those rules that we went over before, you should be able to have a bit of clarity when trying to read these documents. Just keep in mind, everything's in objects. Objects are always within curly brackets, and there are always a string and a value pair, or a name value pair. I think that's going to do it for this video. Stay tuned for the rest of the custom model series where we go in and we break down what exactly all of this stuff means, how we can change it in order to do what we want within the game. So I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more to come.